Hiya guys, Nigel here with you and it's a cold and grey Monday morning or Monday lunchtime and um, video here for you all about annealing. Um, there are lots of videos about annealing on YouTube. This is my way of doing it, it's not necessarily the correct way, it's just my way and I just want to show you the results you get. So it's not only about how to do it, it's why. The reason I'm doing this video, I've been inspired by a couple of videos I've seen over the last couple of days. One was from uh, Steve over at the Model Shed and he's building a beautiful model of the HMS Hood in 200 scale uh, using the Pontos set and he happened to mention on there he never anneals brass and um, that's absolutely fine. I, I, a lot of people don't, I never used to, but now I tend to anneal more than not. So I just want to show you why. Um, the other one, I was watching last night a video from a guy on a channel which is called Trumpeter Titanic. Go and have a look, he's got not many subscribers and I think he deserves a lot more because his videos are, are very well done. I think he, he shows you basically how he does everything and piece by piece, show, piece, piece by piece, piece by piece, shows you how it's being assembled. Um, he's doing the, using the Pontos update, update set and yesterday's video was all about the foremast. The video is actually called uh, Titanic Trumpeter Foremast Assembly Part Hashtag 1. So basically, um, this is what he's doing here. And we can see in the Pontos manual, you've got this, um, the front part of the crow's nest, and he's actually got, you've got to roll that around and get it curved, and then you fold it up, and that's going to form this part here, the front of your crow's nest. Now, I would, I would personally do this and then solder it, but um, he's using super glue. That's absolutely fine. And the thing is, if you anneal your brass and you do use super glue, then, you know, it's going to make it a lot more long lasting. We must have all seen, I've got a piece of brass here. Let's take this, for instance. You need to get this piece of brass to go around this shape. Say this is the top of a funnel or something. So you start there, you put some super glue there and you hold it and then you put a drop there and you roll it round and you hold it and then you put another drop here and you roll it round and you hold it and you clamp it all in place let the glue go off and that's actually fine it stays there and then after a couple of weeks ping it pings off because the glue is under stress because it's constantly constantly wanting to spring off okay now the beauty here is if you anneal your brass then it will actually um it will actually hold that shape and there'll be no stress on the glue whatsoever. So the best thing to do is get your part to bend, stay in shape so the glue is literally holding it on there rather than holding everything in place because after a time, you know, it could be a couple of years, um, it will actually ping off. I'm just removing these little nibs on here so I don't cut myself. So this is basically a piece of virgin brass. Okay, now if you watch, it's got some residual sellotape, this is from the scale of the Titanic photo etch sets, you do get a lot of spare brass with them. So um, basically this is the, this is a piece of virgin brass and what I would do, I, what I want to do now is actually roll this and roll it into shape. Now if you watch what the guy on Trumpeter Titanic was doing, He's trying to make the front of that crow's nest, so he gets a former, I think he uses a spanner to start with, and he tries to form it around the, and it just doesn't work. Okay, so he gets something a bit smaller. So he gets something a bit smaller. Nope, still doesn't work. And he ends up using like a sanding stick. I'm trying to bend it around the end of a sanding stick. Try to hold the shape. But it just doesn't stay. It keeps springing back. Now, personally, the way I would do it is to get a sanding sponge and a rod. And I'm just going to, for ease of um, demonstration, I'm going to use a, a, a cheap paint paintbrush. And you can see there, I can push this down into the sand and sponge and I can push it really hard and it will curl up and it will give me the shape that I'm looking for. It gives you a nice constant radius. And if you go right off the ends, like so, you can actually roll it into a full circle. But no, you can't because it just keeps springing back. It won't let you. So let's just pull that back out flat. Now, for smaller brass, I would use a candle. But unfortunately, because this is a bigger piece, I need to use a blow lamp. So I've got this. This is actually a Rhoda Solder Pro 70. It's, it comes in a lovely box with all these different ends on it. Recommend it. It's a really good little tool. So basically, you get a lighter with it. I'm going to use this lighter to light it. Okay, so we've got a little blow lamp there. All right, so we just let it get a bit of uh, heat into it. Like 
works out and then I'm going to hold this piece of brass in a pair of tweezers now hopefully this won't happen too quickly I want this to happen quite slowly so you can see but what we want to do is get the color to change to a kind of blue hue Okay, you can see where I'm putting the heat there now and it's changing to this golden color and then once it changes to go to purple blue Okay, and this is happening nice and slowly for you to see. You can see we've got this lovely blue, blue colour appearing. You get some areas that don't change the fastest because there's dirt or debris or whatever on there. Okay, now if you hold it on there for too long, it will glow red, or if you put the heat up too much, it will glow red. See if I can get it to glow. Now I'm not putting that much heat into it purposely because it will happen in seconds. If it glows red, get the heat away as quick as you can because it's about to melt. It will just end up being a blob. But you can see it's turning this, this blue colour and then it's going back to the straw colour. Now I have heard, heard people say you can use soap to change the colour. I've never tried that or to monitor the colour as I say. I've never tried that. Um, Put the heat up. Let's see what happens. Okay, I've refilled the, the, the thing now and it's working much better. So you can see here, if I heat it enough here, it will start to glow red. Okay, if I get the heat in there, it will glow red. And that is when you need to get away because when you get it glowing red, it's too hot. And it may actually start to distort and deform. So we come along now, we get this, you can see we've got this blue hue remaining behind the flame. Okay, now the correct way to anneal brass, a lot of people argue you don't need to do this, um, you probably don't, um, but the correct way to anneal brass is to quench it. So we take some water, and we just dip it in the cold water, like so. Okay, and that will actually get everything aligned again. <clears throat> so you can see we've got some debris on the end of there, that's actually some residual sellotape or whatever. And you can see it hasn't really changed the look of the brass much, um, but the beauty of it now is it's much softer. So when we come along with something like this and we want to bend it around, it will hold its shape. You come along with something smaller, it will hold its shape. Come along with your end of your sanding stick, it holds the shape. And also, you'll see that when I come to do this, remember in a month, bearing in mind this is the same piece of brass, same sanding sponge, same paintbrush, watch now. I can roll this into a complete circle, just like so. It's that easy, and it stays there. You know, and also, if you remember this little piece of brass here, I tried to get it to, Let's use this piece of brass here, okay? Same end, I'm not cheating or anything. I'm going to get this to go around this shape here. I'm going to hold it in place with some super glue and it's going to ping off. Right, take the same piece of brass. I'm not swapping it over. I'm not doing any editing whatsoever. Okay. Just get the flame. Get the colour to change. There's our blue. Just go along. Okay, just to show you, you don't actually have to quench it. <clears throat> just going to wait for that to cool down. You don't have to quench it, but it's good if you do. Okay, it's almost cold enough to touch. There we go. So now, okay, same piece of brass, I can wrap this around here, like that. Look at that. I mean, it's springing back slightly, but I could just give that a tweak and it will stay there. So now your super glue isn't trying to keep it there because it's all under load and everything. Okay, and if you want to straighten it out, you can straighten it out. If you want to pre-bend it, pre-make a, a strange shape into it, something you can. You know, if you try and do it on a piece of non-annealed, non this, this end here is annealed, this end isn't. You can see if I bend that around my thumb, 
it springs back like that. If I do exactly the same on this end, it stays there. All right. The other place it works really well is when you do a seat belts. And I've got a cheap plastic seat here from my spares box. And I've got a couple of thin strips of, um, of brass. Now, just to show you, you don't need a blow lamp for your bigger stuff, for your smaller stuff. So I've got this piece here, which is longer. So we get the longer one and we'll anneal the longer one because obviously you don't have to hold it. So I can do this literally with a cigarette lighter. I can come along, hold the piece of brass over the lighter. And because it's so thin, you get this black color. That's the soot. But because it's so small, you can actually anneal it with a cigarette lighter. You can see the color changing on there. Chasing the colour, you've got the blue colour on there. You can see it's starting to glow red. Get away. If it starts to glow red, get out of it. Okay, and then I'm just going to quench that. Just to cool it, and then wipe it off with a cloth, because when you use a cigarette lighter or a flame, you get that black sooting on there. Okay, so that's annealed. That one isn't. Now, let's make sure that's turned off. Right, so we're going to imagine that this is a... A photo etch harness riding to this seat, so I'm just going to slip this end into the back here. He says, We'll slip that end into the back there over the headrest, like so, and then we'll slip this one, which is not annealed, into the same position. Okay, so now we've got, let's get them the same length. Okay, so this one's annealed, this one isn't. So I'm going to bend this one up over the headrest and down into the seat. Oh, look. So what do I do? I come along, I hold it down, I super glue it, hold it in place, super glue it and everything, and it keeps springing back up. Watch this one. I'm going to bend this over the headrest, exactly the same, push it down. Look, it's staying where I put it. Okay, now what you can do here. You can see there that it is springing away slightly. So if I push it down hard there, it stops it springing away. You can see it will pretty much stay where I put it. Now, unfortunately, I can't show you the force required on camera because I don't have a, a meter to do it. But pushing that one down is a lot more stress than pushing that one down. And that one there, drop a super glue and that will stay in place and it will stay there forever. That one there. Drop a super glue, hold it in place for probably 10 minutes, but it will soon spring back. OK, so that's basically what we're doing. And the other thing is, of course, when it's annealed, because it's soft and it's like lead, you can bend it around and twist it and mess it all up. OK, and you can make it look a lot more realistic. Obviously, if you've got painted harnesses, you can't do this. Well, you can, but you just have to repaint them. Okay, so you can actually, with that now all creased up and altered, you can get a sort of more realistic, bent, sort of folded up shape into it. Let's just hold that down at the bottom, like that. Okay, so that's the beauty of having everything annealed. You can push it down with your fingers and it'll, it'll hold its shape. All right, so that's why I do it, guys. Um, I think that the, the 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 real proper big, the big demonstration, the big uh, test is that is that one there. You know, if you take a piece of brass that's that's not annealed, as I showed you in the first part of the video, you know, this end here, I'm not sure if this is going to work, but this end here, I'm pushing it down, and you can see what's happening, and that end isn't annealed. It's forming a curve, but it's not staying. Well, it is staying, but it's it's not a very not a very sharp curve whereas with this end where it's annealed I can come along and I can push down and I can make a, a tight circle with it like so you can see the difference that end to that end this end's all soft soft and gooey this end's all spriggy all right that's why I do it, guys. As I say, this here is the Eroda Solder Pro 70. It comes with a cutting knife. It comes with a little a bigger blow lamp attachment. 
for the end and it comes with this little tiny blow lamp attachment on the end. Not sure what the difference is. One's a heat blower and one's a blow torch. So not really sure. One's It looks like from the instructions, one's for uh, separating C's nuts and one's for actually um, soldering. There we go, guys. So hope you've enjoyed that. I'll see you all soon. Thanks for watching and bye for now.